Today, I am following my friend Jason Vincent around while he does a photo walk at WPPI in Las Vegas. He is doing some off-camera flash, some off-camera light in a reception style environment. Also, Jason is speaking at Canada Photo Summit in a few weeks now. He's also doing an additional workshop the day after. Check it out if you're interested. My name is Jason Vincent, and we are on our way to a photo walk called Epic Low Light Portraits. Um, and we're on our way to a different location because we went to the wrong one for the first time. <laughs> Here, we're moving. You ready? Let me help you carry anything? No, I'm good. Okay. Please. Natalie, okay. What's that? Which one is this? Uh, Epic Low Light Portraits with Jason. Okay. We are commandeering this meeting room. Everybody hang out and relax for a minute. Let's see if I brought a camera. <laughs> Okay, so they scheduled the low light portrait class at 10.30 in the morning. So now we're going to um, be held up in this meeting room where we're gonna make something work in here. Um, does anybody have any questions before we kind of get started? Awesome, I'm that good already. Okay, this is great. For today's class, does everyone here want to shoot or does everyone prefer to just like watch and learn? Okay, that's enough. Okay, for lighting wise, I'm starting off with the Stella Pro Reflex S. I feel like whenever you're doing low light stuff, um, it actually becomes a little easier because you can actually see and like you can see what the light's doing, especially if you're using video light. So in a lot of low light stuff, I will I'll gravitate towards this light because I don't need the power of bigger flashes. Um, that said, we're going to do some stuff as well where, where I'm going to be mixing constant light and flashes as well. And so we'll kind of um, tie that in in a little bit. But for now, we're going to start with this. But first, let me clear some space here. Okay, so lighting wise, my favorite kind of go-to setup is I love anything that's sort of backlight. Um, so we're gonna kind of start there. The amazing Natalie, can I have you come over here? And you are going to stand in front of this and then you're going to look directly that way. Okay. okay. Yeah, don't blind yourself. As she's looking this way, you have to think about a backlight as kind of like a silhouette. So go ahead and look that way. So if you're looking straight down, I wanna be able to see all of her silhouette. So as you can tell, she's, her face is not quite all the way turned, so I'm not seeing the full silhouette. And then also see this hair on her chin and then tucked on her shoulder, that's also blocking the jawline. And so I wanna remove that so I can see the full silhouette. So um, the hair on your right-hand side, if you can kind of push that off your shoulder and then kind of like either tuck it behind your ear or there we go. So now I have a full silhouette, okay? So let me get a camera. Pro tip, take the lens cap off. Go ahead and turn your body a little bit. Okay, so the reason why I don't want her to turn all the way is because now I'm seeing this light here. So go ahead and turn your body. I'm basically using her shoulder to flag the light off of the front here so it's only rim light. Okay, and so, yeah, so keep your body how it is and turn your head just slightly this way, just a little bit more. There it is right there. Okay, so this is what we're getting. It's nothing super special, but it's the baseline of where we're gonna be starting, so. And so setting wise for this, I am at ISO 250. That's the base ISO of this camera. Um, one fourth of a second and F16, which seems like crazy settings for low light portraits. I understand. The reason why is I want to be at one fourth of a second because we're gonna start doing things with shutter drag. So I need to be able to have a lower shutter speed so I can incorporate some movement. Okay. Okay, so you see how it's not like a blob of light, you're getting all of these, these like lines and stuff incorporated into it. Okay, there's a full CTO gel on there. Okay, so now we're going to add both. So it's gonna be constant light and flash. Perfect, okay. Um, turn your face slightly more this way, there it is, okay. And the thing with Shutter Drag, it's like, you just kind of have to take a bunch of photos and see which one, like different movements cause different things. Okay, so here's an example of what that looks like. Settings on that one? Um, still the same as we started out. So it's one fourth of a second F16 ISO 250. Um, keep in mind that I have the flash gelled with a full CTO gel. The constant light is like a neutral light. It's like 5,500 Kelvin. Um, so in post, like if you look in here, you'll see that there's like warm bits of light and then there's also cool bits of light. And so in post, whenever you push those colors, like you'll have those complementary colors, but they'll be a lot more vibrant. I have a Sony, I have a Sony Godox trigger, if anybody wants to use that. Um, settings, again, I'm at F, um, F16, one fourth of a second, ISO 250. 
You guys said you wanted to shoot, come on. <laughs> about, um, the question was asked what I would do is if, it was a, if there was a couple instead of just a bride and groom, okay? Um, and obviously we don't have a couple, but I'll, I'll explain the, the posing technique at least. Go ahead, you can sit down for just a quick second if you wanna take a break. Okay, so I'm going to walk through this with my hands and everyone can kind of come up and get an idea. Oh. Okay, so the posing technique and uh, that I do for this situation, if it's a couple, um, is something that I just call bounced rim light because I don't know if there's actually even a real name for it. But if you're, if you're imagining a couple looking at each other, and it might be easier if you kind of look over my shoulder, if they're looking at each other and one couple's blocking the light, my fingers have a perfect rim light. And if I step one just slightly back and angle, you see how this hand is now filling in this hand with a nice soft light. So this would be the groom, and I'd have the groom kind of look towards her shoulder, and then this would be the bride, and she would be looking towards um, like the groom's ear. Okay, so this is them looking at directly at each other, and if the bride just goes a little bit behind the groom and he turns his face, then now this br the bride gets like this amazing, perfectly soft light, and he still has this nice rim light. This is, I was showing some people, this is an example with, um, with a couple that I did, exact same setup. Yeah, they'd be the exact same color, CTO gel on the flash, um, constant light, natural, and then you just crank up the saturation and play around with your white balance to get that dialed in. So we'll do a two, a two light setup. One of my like go-to things, this is a great for like big vast scenes where you wanna draw attention to a subject like you know the like little person, big world type things, especially at nighttime, um, is I'll just silhouette someone against an object. And so the only thing I'm looking for is like a clean space of wall. So this could be any wall outside and there could just be like stars and mountains and trees or whatever. I'm just looking for anything that's like somewhat flat and clean that I can silhouette a couple, um, a couple or in this case, just the bride. And so we will do that here. Um, actually, we're gonna do, sorry, blinding ray. Um, we're gonna do with off camera flash here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is there's gonna be a full CTO gel and then the mag sphere. Basically what the mag sphere is gonna do is I'm projecting a pattern on the wall and the mag sphere is just gonna make it nice and round and have like a nice fall off on it. And then, yep, just like that, come this way just a tad. Yep, there it is, okay. And then open your body up a little bit more to me. There it is. And then you're gonna look just straight towards that door. Okay. Okay, so this is where we're at so far. Um, the adjusting that I was doing is because I'm creating a little hot spot of light behind or on the wall to silhouette her against. And I want that hot spot to be like symmetrical and perfect. And so this is where we're at here. To make this a little cooler, we're going to add another flash. It's pretty rare that this technique won't work pretty much anywhere. It, the, the hardest part is just finding a surface that you can project the light on that's good. Like. So I turn these overhead lights on. I, these overhead lights are orange in color. And so I want complementary color. So I change the gel on my flash to blue. I still have one quarter of a second, but because these lights are on now, I needed to raise my aperture to compensate to get these dialed down, which means my flash power needed to go up. I call this the Yahtzee. When some other people were shooting, they were getting a lot of the floor and this like crazy texture here was giving some cool little spiral. So if you, so what I'm gonna do is now ignore these lights and I'm actually going to light the floor so that when you shutter drag that, it makes those pop a little bit more. Or that's the idea. We'll see if it actually works. This is blue. And so now I wanna go back to my CTO gel. the camera up high so I could look down because then that showed me more floor and then I just kind of did like little twisty wavy motions. Yeah. Like five portraits and the model doesn't move from her spot on the wall. <laughs> the problem solving aspect of it, I think. Just like trying to figure out something that works or seeing something that you got on the back of the camera and figuring out how to either recreate it or make it more apparent or do some sort of like twist or spin on it to make it just look cooler. Okay, go ahead and go back, um, open your body just a little bit more to me. There we go, that's it right there. Um, and then the hair on your right, can you just kind of tuck that back just a little bit more? Actually set the flash to a mode which is called multi-mode, which makes it so as soon as you hit the shutter, you can set it to take, um, the flash will go off a certain amount of times within a certain period. It's super weird, like my settings right now are 1 16th power 
it's gonna go off three times at nine hertz, and nine hertz is like nine flashes per second. So you have to do the crazy math because I'm at one fourth of a second. Anyways, those are the settings, this is what we're getting. Okay, so this is what we're getting here. I had no idea that I wanted to do them, right? I'm inspired by something that I saw while I was taking photos, so, or in um, other cases, what other people were taking. So being visually open to what you're seeing, like people are like, oh, don't chimp and look at the back of your camera, but it's important to look at what you're getting to make sure you're getting it and then be open to seeing something and taking your ideas into another direction, okay? So like the, the light on the floor, like I never intended on doing that. I saw kind of like little hints of that and I was like, oh, if I add light to the floor, then I can take that up a notch and get even more streaks. And then as we were taking photos, someone triggered it in the between mine. So I had the double um, silhouette and I was like, oh, well now I can put it in multi-mode and I can get like three and I can have a little bit more control over that instead of having to wait for someone else to happen to trigger it while I was had my shutter open. That makes sense? Okay. Um, anybody want to try this? Thanks for uh, hanging out. Hopefully you learned a little bit um, at this photo walk at WPPI um, and I'll catch you on the next one. Links to find out more about Jason in the description below. And again, Canada Photo Summit happening here at our home in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada in just a few weeks from now. There are still a few tickets available. So if you want to come, you want to hang out with Jason. He's also doing a full day workshop the day after Canada Photo Summit. So get in on that as well if you're interested. See you next time.